John, the whole issue of variable interest rates at the banks, I believe that was the initial issue that got you on this path all those years ago. It certainly was. Can you give the listeners and viewers a recap on exactly what happened, what your what your actual issue with the banks was? There was some concern over the level of debt that you thought you owed them, and then you, again, as I said, that, that's what got you on the path to investigating these, these issues and topics. Yeah, it's like a snowball going into there. It started with one word, you know, and when I had this business loan, and uh, I was paying off considerable lumps sum. Then after two years, they said, "Oh, you owe ten thousand more dollars." So you actually borrowed it in the first place. So that is wrong, you know. And so I did the investigation into common law uh, contracts and so forth, and found that they can't do it. And, and then I found out that they passed an act of parliament say the lender can vary the terms of the contract. Contract. Well, that negates the contract. There's no contract if it, <laughs> if it's added to or, or breached and so forth. So uh, I took one word to, to the Supreme Court. I said, I, the one word was variable. And I said, that is bad under contract law. And I want the, that bad part of the contract severed, that's the legal term, uh, severed from the contract to keep that contract viable. And But the judges knew that when there was a landmark decision, the, the, the variable interest rate com, uh, contract of uh, a fraud, the banks would lose trillions of dollars and they weren't going to with us. So this initial judge said, oh no, uh, the interest rate is indeed certain. And it's got it in, in the book here, this whole judgment. And I said, that's a lie. And I went right through to the High Court and I said, one word to the judges of the High Court, does variable mean uncertain? And they said, oh, go away, we can't answer that question. So all the time it's been concealing the fraud. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, unless we could, uh, there's one simple topic. This is the key to blowing the banks out. We want banks but to service it in a fair way, honourable way, but not dishonestly, not steal our money. I think it must have been a very eye-opening experience for you to go through that because I think it must have revealed to you that the banks and the judges, not the banks independently, but the banks and the judges are in fact working in tandem with each other. Absolutely. It's a conspiracy. A conspiracy to defraud. Simple as that. It's a conspiracy. And the, they, the judges are concealing a serious offence. That's, I think, 15 years in jail. And they, they said, we don't care, you know. They, they get away with it because, because they're not being held to account. And the Magna Carta Monument in Canberra says that uh, uh, Magna Carta is now seen as a traditional mandate for trial by jury and justice for all, accountable government. Accountable government and no arbitrary imprisonment. So that's what we've got to get back, we've got to get it back to the principles uh, of, of common law and fairness.